Hi, this is Dr. Robert O again. Uh, we're going to launch our lecture six today. Uh, hopefully we could wrap, uh, wrap up uh, the whole cup inner dynamic between me and Central Peace today. But let's start our lecture with prayer, shall we? Father, uh, come and help us. Help me, Lord, that I may share accurately, clearly, uh, that there will be uh, inspiration, there will be revelation, Lord, in this teaching so that you will be glorified and uh, the students can be inspired, Lord, to become a better pastor, better ministers for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to share uh, the PowerPoint as usual. Okay, well, lecture six um, is Cup and Kapjil, uh, part two, Cup and her dynamic in central peace. Paksu, uh, we talked about Cup and Kapjil, uh, and I said it over and over again there is absolutely nothing wrong with the relationship between cup and her, but when it start becoming kapje or patronizing, then we have a problem. So um, I asked this question. I have been relating with central peace for many, many years, but at which stage uh, kapje can take place? And answer is that every stage is not a certain stage. It's its attitude. Uh, so you, you could uh, be a cop as a sponsor, but then you could be cop as a sponsor. You could be a cop as a father, and then father, you could really be, even be a super cop because well, you were supposed to be father, and father and child relationship is always um, very sensitive. And so, and then you could even as a cop, as another sponsor. So my relationship with Central Peace uh, at the beginning stage, I was a sponsor. And then, you know, where I had to father them, send them through school. Um, and, and so it was play that role. And then uh, became a sponsor again, you know, send them through college. And then became a mentor. Uh, now that uh, they're getting old, they got their own kids now. Um, and we have not yet moved to a uh, partnership yet. And, and even, even mentoring is not even a very personal or intimate mentoring because we just don't have time, but it'll be more uh, mentoring time to time, I guess. So the question is, did Kapjil or Ulji take place between Robert and Bopar or COP? Uh, if there is a Kapjil, there is a Ulji. Ulji is a term that I actually coined. There's no such term in Korea. But um, I realized that as much as people patronize or overpower and uh, be very abusive, uh, Ul also uh, one that actually make that happen or prolong that dynamic. So, which is I call Urjir. So, Urjir is just like Kapjir. It is Ur, the client, who really wants to be client and who uh, abuse that power of client or becomes an opportunist as a, a client and does not want to grow or as a client, they intentionally want to be dependent. They don't want to grow up uh, and uh, things like that. So as a patron or cop uh, gives protection, money, access, uh, the client uh, gives back the loyalty, thanks, and, and allegiance, allegiance and balance and give and take, remember? It's never just one way. It's always give and take. 
Um, but when it becomes exploitation, then becomes kapje. Uh, when patron demands their ways or become abusive uh, with the power they have, then we call that kapje. And we call it urge where paternalism uh, uh, happens and we want it unequal, it's imbalance. It's not balance of reciprocity, give and take. But ur is demanding now, instead of uh, the client says, well, you better give me 500,000 a month salary for me to the church. I hope you call urge. <laughs> so it's instead of like, well, let's plan a church together. Um, you know, and actually, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I uh, during my interview, I found uh, some pastor who was uh, already, what, seven years ago, uh, $450 support. Um, but he was getting the same support from American pastors. So he was getting like, uh, nine hundred dollars uh, five six years ago and that's a lot of money uh, especially in the countryside and yet he wasn't happy he was demanding more is that and he has to send his kids through the best international school in the city and, and I, I was wondering like <laughs> why does he think that missionary has to send his kids through the best international school in their city it's called Urjil. It's if it, the Kapjil is the patron having abusive relationship, Urjil would be the client having the abusive relationship. So definition of Urjil is Ur client intentionally seeking to keep his or her place as Ur, which prevents him from becoming self-sustaining body of Christ. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, Cambodia has uh, annual flood we have flood after flood every year uh, and yet mm, and there is a four million dollar emergency fund for the flood and yet every time there is a flood mm -hmm. uh, they seek support from international community you know so that would be urgent um, so cup, well, at which stage cup can take place? Cup as a sponsor? Well, at each stage, although I could be uh, doing cup jir, but it's a little different. And this is what I mean. Sponsor cup as a sponsor uh, because they are very much dependent on you. You have a lot more power, right? Because they are very independent, uh, very much. Uh, not independent, and they are very, very dependent. So then what happens is that it's asymmetrical, meaning that it's, it's imbalanced. I have too much power from this hierarchical, right? And in the area of scope of exchange, the resource base, local resource control, uh, I have control over. So I can really become uh, abusive. So in the patron client dynamic, uh, me as a sponsor uh, has pretty much a good chance of becoming cup and doing the cup jib. For example, uh, the Center of Peace, I was the initially the sponsor that just provide uniform, right? Um, and, then, and it will cost us maybe $2,000 a year or something like that. And then uh, we realized that they need vitamin. So my wife, uh, we start providing vitamin for the children and uh, we... Um, start buying de-warming pills, you know. Cambodia, everything's organic and you just, all the vegetables you eat has, of course, uh, parasites. And so we have to de-warm the children time to time. I remember 
uh, when we were doing mission work in Kampong Cham area, we bought something like 20,000 units of these deworming pills and then give to children. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we actually hired a medical staff. Uh, she was a certified nurse. And then we kept our children's file, um, their health re report, uh, and things like that. So that's something that I've done as a, as a, as a cop, as a patron, which was, it's, it's a good thing. It's not a problem. And also provide rights because we realize that uh, they don't have basic uh, rice each month. So, so that's the role of cop. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then it can become kapjil. Okay. I, as a same sponsor, uh, working with Central Peace Orphanage, as a cop, I'm providing uniform, providing vitamin, deworming pills, hire the medical staff, and provide rice. So that's that's not kapjil. That's that's a good thing. But then at a very slight of difference. I mean, it's not even major jump. It's just, just a little more, maybe half more step or one more step. You, I start demanding certain standard of hygiene, for example, right? So I'll bring them toothpaste, tooth, uh, tooth, tooth uh, brush and toothpaste and toothbrush. And, and then instead of trusting the staff and there's a certain national standard of hygiene in Cambodia, but then instead that I demand American standard example or Korean standard hygiene, you must do this or else, right? They will be considered captured. Or I only providing rice, but then without even giving extra money, demanding certain standard quality of food, right? It's like, why can't you feed children chicken? You know, now and then, I'm like, well, they don't have money. Why don't you give them more fish or give them eggs and uh, things of that nature? So when we start demanding more than what we've given, that is considered capture, right? Or uh, demanding certain recognition, like uh, public exposure and, and actually take pictures and use it in, in uh, a context that is not appropriate then is considered captured. Uh, and, and of course, I was, it, I was in the place that I could have done that, of course, because I knew I would not be engaged in something like that. What, what about Ul versus Uljil as a COP, Central Peace Sponsoree? Now, if you are at the receiving end, right? So as a Ul, when I give uniform, well, you receive uniform and well, thank you. Thank you for providing uh, uniform for our children. That's okay. That's what patron clients so patron provide and receive. Uh, health issues of children taken care of. So we're well, thank you for checking our children's teeth. So I hired a dentist and they take all their teeth uh, and check their uh, eyesight, their medical checkup and so he said, well, thank you. It's a health issues are taken care of. So Bhopal was very, very happy. So, and Bhopal was very happy without her asking me about rice, then I would pay several thousand dollars to the, um, the rice farmer. And then each month they'll bring certain amount of rice. I don't, I don't know how many kilo. So uh, it was taken care of. So rice is provided no, Financial burden is on Bopar. So in a way, that was a good thing. Uh, she was busy taking care of the children, you know, pro providing for the education. I mean, can you, dealing with 82 kids and providing for them, it's crazy. It's like army. So she was happy that there was no financial burden. Now, it can turn to a urge if she likes it and said, okay, uh, now I'm gonna demand two sets of, or well, we, we gave them two sets of uniform per year, uh, demanding three sets of uniform and more money and, uh, and prolong the dependence that would be considered urgent as 
that's the part that um, Bopar could be engaged, but she never did that. I'm just saying that it could happen uh, and there will be the form of urging expectation of support begins and demanding for the support. So it's kind of a progressive, you know, no one wants to be dependent on someone else. And yet, as time passed by, that you first appreciate, well, oh, thank you so much. And then you start expecting, well, where is my salary coming? And then now you demand, I need 40% raise of my salary. So what start out as a very grateful, that, oh, you're providing so that I could serve God, now you start demanding. And that would be urge. Uh, what about cup as father, patron as father? Well, uh, father goes to, of course, uh, different level. It's very personal and enduring. Uh, and duration of bond and scope of exchange. What does that mean? Well, it's very personal. It's no longer, oh, you know, Pastor Robert, but he's, wow, he's like a father, right? He's, he's my father. I mean, you have a very personal relationship. And how, how long is the duration of bond with a father? One year? No. How long is your father your father? Well, lifetime, no end. You, he dies and he still die as your father. Or if I die, I die as a father to my children. So duration of bond is extended. Scope of exchange is much more greater. Because when I, how I take care of my children is different than how I take care of the orphans at the orphanages. So when I stepped up to play the role of a father, um, now as a good cop or patron, I will pay for their college tuition, I'll pay for their uniform, I'll pay for their food. So pretty much uh, I took over the complete provision, right? Now, what is the capture? And of, there are many, many different kinds of capture that I could think of and maybe in class that we could talk about in person. But the greatest capture that I saw uh, in, mm, my relationship at COP is because I was, you know, a bit immature, uh, kind of deciding who should become what, right? As a pastor, as a preacher, you know, when you see a smart guy who's really brilliant, then, oh, you should be a pastor. Now, um, from my perspective, it could be harmless. It's not something that I have evil intent or I don't really mean evil. But from the recipient's perspective, while well, the father is saying that you should be a pastor, and he probably doesn't have gift of pastoring or even calling a pastor, but in order to please the father, okay, I'll go to Bible college for you. I'll start a church for you. Now, that is a problem. That's called kapjin. Don't You cannot make life decision for someone else just because you are providing for them. Uh, but I mean, it's not uh, exclusive to my relationship with COP uh, or anything like that. It's, it's a common theme of power abuse from parents to children. Parents, they feel like I fed you, I clothed you, I sent you to school. So you do what I tell you to do. You become a doctor or you become a lawyer or you become an engineer. You know, uh, in my first doctorate at Fuller, I found out there are 23,000 kinds of jobs in Korea, 23,000 different jobs, and like 33,000 different jobs in America. And Korean parents narrowed that down to four, doctor, lawyer, engineer, and business, that's it, <laughs> okay? And, and, and in a way, uh, missionaries have come and they're doing exactly the same. They are trying to turn everybody into pastors. Why? You need to plant church. Why? Well, because our denomination has to plant more church than the other. Well, that will be the kind of cynical term. Of course, we need the church plan because, of course, we need to preach the gospel. And, of course, more church, the more people have a chance to hear the gospel. But at a certain point, who decides that? 
missionaries or God? We're not God. I'm not going to tell someone that I paid money tuition to say, you better be a pastor or else I'm not going to support you. They will be considered kapjir, right? Uh, using that as a leverage uh, to control. So we do not support, we do not help so that using that as a leverage to manipulate and have control over a person's life. If there is any element of that in the relationship, it will be considered kapjir. Well, what about me as a patron, as a sponsor? Well, then I had to become a sponsor again, right? Uh, now that they're all uh, getting into next phase of life um, uh, and then scope of exchange uh, is also changed. So it's not, it's no longer um, just money. Now it's relationship. Uh, I have to take it to the next level. Um, what me as a patron as COP sponsor again, uh, the positive aspect was uh, these children have grown up. I mean, they are getting married. So less, less time commitment. I don't even have to live with them. I used to live with them and as a father, uh, but no, no longer. Uh, less financial burden because the, it used to be 82 uh, children, but of the government issues. And um, now it's only 15. So, I mean, can you imagine, you know, feeding 85 kids plus all the staff and teachers versus 15, which is very, very insignificant compared to 82. There's more personal relationship knowing each person, more personal relationship knowing each person. So because uh, the number has decreased, now I even know their name. And, and when it was 82, I, there's no way I'm going to remember any of them. And besides, a central piece was not my major ministry. It was something that I was doing on the side because I had other teaching ministry and, and, and all that. So, but the positive aspect of me being cop as a COP sponsor again is that I got to actually know a few of them that, uh, more closely. Now, the negative side of uh, me being the cop as a COP sponsor again is that uh, it became kind of a less of a priority. I mean, COP used to be the center and I used to make a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of prayer and meeting and ma managing, you know, reading their report. Uh, um, I mean, we used to have a Excel sheet report, you know, 10, 20 pages and go through them and, you know, we train them how to manage. Uh, but now it's, they're older. So it's less priority and less time. Uh, this, uh, and then funding ending due to deduction in size. So, but what also happened is that because uh, I don't really engage in the uh, central piece as a main piece, and then my patron, my cop, uh, basically said, well, then you don't really need uh, this kind of budget per month. And so they start uh, lowering their support for me, uh, so which was quite negative. Um, what about Ul as a COP sponsor again? You know, now, the, from the recipient's perspective, well, they got housing, right? Uh, free housing, <laughs> right? And all these learning opportunities, uh, we're sending them through professional school, grad, you know, college, and then, you know, YWAM base and two-year program, which cost thousands of dollars. Um, but that's the positive from the earth, the client's perspective. Uh, the negative side is that, well, when it was a father to a child relationship, it was very personal. But being a sponsor, a sponsoree, uh, it's not that personal. Although I know them very well because the relationship dynamic is that now I'm a sponsor and your sponsoree, it's quite distant. Okay? And then no long-term plan can be made. So you cannot project 10 years within the relation because it's, I'm sponsoring a school, I'm sponsoring a project, I'm sponsoring certain part of your life. So that would be negative aspect. Well, I uh, now, you know, way after how many years, 15 years or so, 14 years, I am playing kind of a role of a mentor where 
they are very, very independent. We don't really, uh, uh, in a way, uh, we, we don't really meet regularly. And yet, well, time to time, they will call, uh, right? So in terms of mentoring, it's very voluntary. I cannot force it. Um, so they're on their own. And in terms of partner, uh, we have not reached that point yet because um, partner is, they are completely independent. And actually as a partner, they should benefit me uh, and I should benefit them. And that's true partnership. Uh, it's 50%, 50% that we take, give and take also. So we have not reached that point. Uh, the reciprocity is, is critical, uh, but in terms of COP, we really have not reached that point. So in terms of patron-client relationship characteristic, Kapji, more prone, there's no such thing. Every stages uh, you could start doing Kapji. Um, so, I am right now basically looking at my own work uh, from the scope of cup energy so that uh, when we meet together uh, that you could ask personal question uh, and I could really probably respond more better, <laughs> respond more clear. But the things that I learned through um, orphanages, administering orphanages, which is, will be a very classical case. It is something that a lot of missionaries do. And there's a lot of abuse. There are a lot of kapje taking place. And uh, a lot of money stolen uh, from uh, orphanage ministry, whether they are Koreans or Cambodians or doesn't matter. So it's critical that we understand what is the good role of a cup and when it becomes cup jib. The goal is for us to train you to become man of God and woman of God, who will serve the Lord with integrity. Um, and so that when you are dealing with your sponsor or your patron, that you build a proper relationship. It is always important that um, you understand your role. The role is clearly defined. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please send it to me. Uh, then I'll respond uh, based on that. And so I'm looking at my first uh, project of my role as um, cop in dealing with center of peace orphanage. But now I'm going to be talking about the other part, uh, which would be my involvement with salt and light bookstore and publishing aspect, and my role as the sponsor of the sponsor, um, pastor's leadership conference in Cambodia, and my relationship with Pastor Tang back home. Uh, I'll teach on uh, maybe the principle of man of peace um, so that the dynamic uh, that I had with my clients as I open it up to you, maybe you could learn. And then you say, oh, okay, if that's what he did with Bopar, if that's what he did with Pastor Tang Bekong, that's what he did with him, maybe I need to also learn how to relate to my patron so they will have a healthy relationship so that you go all the way to partnership someday. Amen. I don't want you to stay as a client. Uh, you need to move on to sponsorship. Um, you need to go on and become the partner eventually. So I'm kind of backtracking and sharing my, my mission work for the last 20 years. And then maybe uh, out of my presentation, I'm not saying that this is the greatest. I'm not saying this is what you need to do. I'm not prescribing you to do anything. 
I am describing what I have done. And then you could raise objection or say, oh, your relationship is, he was like that. Maybe my relationship with Korean missionaries like this. And then what can I learn from that? And, um, and I hope I, I make it very clear. And, and eventually, I know you'll be helpful because I'm telling you my stories and I'm being honest and being very frank. I don't, I don't like to cover things. I just want to be frank. This is the mistake I made. This is the, something that I've done well. Um, how, how can you use my experience so that you don't make mistakes? And how it will help you to uh, your relationship with uh, patrons that you work with. Amen. Okay. Well, send me those questions, please. See you at the next lecture.